All right, so to create a Google slideshow that all of your students will have access to when they're in breakout rooms, you're going to go to drive.google.com. And I'll make that big just to make it easier to see. So you'll just type into your address bar drive.google.com. You don't need the slash. I forgot to delete that. So drive.google.com. Then when you're in your Google Drive, you are going to click on New and then Google Slides. Now here I have kind of just my title slide and this might be my instructions for my students of what I want them to do on this assignment when they're in their breakout rooms. And this is just a title slide. It might be better for me to change the layout. So if I click outside, like in the gray, I can choose layout up top and I might have it as title and body as this one. So I might have step by step instructions of what they need to do in their breakout rooms. And I am going to tell them to go to the slide that matches their breakout room number. And um, then I'm gonna create a new slide by clicking up on the top right up here. Why is that not working? My little marker is disappearing. My spotlight, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna click right here on the plus and I have a new slide. And again, the layout is the title and body one. And so I might say like breakout room number one, and then I can leave it blank for my students to type things in. It might actually be helpful to change the layout to the one that's title in two columns, just because it makes it easier for students to add things. Or even if you have four students in a group, you might want to give them four text boxes instead of two. So if I click on one of these, text box. I'm actually going to click on both by pressing shift when I click on the next one. You can see they're both highlighted in blue. I'm just going to cut it in half and then I'm going to press control C to copy it and then control V to paste it. And then I can drag them or move them down. I'm actually using my arrow to move them right now. And then each student has a place to type in their answer if you want it separate that way. Um, you can set up the slide however you want. Um, you can have students put their name on it, just whatever you put in the instructions. Then what I would do is on this slide here, the breakout room number one, I'm going to click on it over on the left so it's highlighted in this yellow. And then I'm going to right click on it and choose duplicate slide. And I'm going to duplicate it multiple times for each of the numbers of groups that you're going to need within your class. And then I'm just going to go back and edit them so that the first one was breakout room one, then breakout room two, three, four, etc. So I'm just ah, typing the wrong thing. Four, um, five, and six. So I don't know how many breakout rooms you're going to have, how large your class size is. I would probably need eight rooms for groups of four in my school. Then what I'm going to do is I can title it like breakout room task, whatever it is. Um, so I change the title of the doc. Then I need to share. So I'm going to click on share up in the top right hand side of the screen. And then what I'm going to do is right here where it says get link. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to change it from restricted to anyone with the link. Now, if you're doing this from your school account, if your school has a Google account, you would see a third option that would be, say something like anyone within seq.org, which is my school's domain. So anyone within your school site with the link. I tend to like to always choose anyone with the link versus anyone within my district with the link, just because sometimes your students, when they're at home on their computers, they might be signed into their personal account when they're accessing things. Um, and so it just makes it easier to always do anyone with the link. So anyone with the link, but over on the right, it says viewer. 
I want my students to be able to edit it. So I'm going to click on Viewer and choose Editor. So now anyone with the link can edit this document. Right here it says Copy Link. I'm going to click on Copy Link and it's copied to my clipboard on my computer. And I'm going to say Done. That is the link that I want to give my students when we're in a Zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and start a Zoom just so you can kind of see. And I won't be able to do breakout rooms just with myself. Um, but what I'm going to do is when I'm in the Zoom with my students, I'm going to go down to the chat, which is right now on the bottom of my screen. And I can just paste that link in, say link to breakout slides and paste the link there so they can click on it and then they can go to the breakout slides. Now, to use breakout rooms with your students, I have it down at the bottom of my screen and that's because I've already turned it on in my Zoom settings. I will put a link to a video here of how to use breakout rooms and how to turn them on. But what once you have them in your Zoom, you have to be the host to be able to access them. You're gonna click on the breakout rooms and you can choose how many groups you want them to be in. So right now there's zero participants. There's just me. I have no one else to put into a breakout room. But you can choose how many rooms you want. And it's not letting me. Oh, it is letting me change. So I can choose like if I had six slides. So I'm going to say six rooms. And it will tell me how many students from each room will be there. And you can choose automatically. That's the easiest. And then you'll say create breakout rooms. You want to do it manually and put kids in specific rooms, you can do that, but it's going to take a bunch of time, so it's probably easiest to just do it automatically. I'm going to create breakout rooms. I don't know if it's actually going to work. Oh, here we go. So then I can see the breakout rooms, and I'm just going to leave them as numbers, but you could rename them if you want to put kids in specific groups um, that have a different name, like students who are working on math in one group, English in another group. And um, once you have kids in here, and again, I'm the only person in this room, but you can um, add people and assign them. And you can also then, you'll have the option to um, add more rooms, move kids into different rooms, and you can actually hop into different rooms. And there are options of um, allowing you to move them into the rooms automatically allowing the participants to re return to the main session at any time. So that's back with you in the main room. You can um, have the breakout rooms close automatically after a particular time when the time is up. So if you want them in rooms for five minutes to work together, you can say five minutes. And then um, you can have a countdown after closing the breakout room. So after those five minutes are up right now, my students would have 60 seconds to come back. So I would probably change that to 10 seconds. So that way they pretty much come back automatically. Um, so there's lots of different features, but more of that will be explained in the other video that I send you because I just don't have access to other people in my breakout room right now to really show you those features. I'm going to end my Zoom meeting and I'm going to go back to my slides. So as your students are working on your in the breakout rooms, you will be able to see what it is they are adding to each of these slides. So you could be watching this as your students are in the breakout room. And then you can pop into the breakout room if you need to.